Uh, greetings, everyone. Uh, share your screen. Oh, well, I'm not supposed to do that. No. Okay, greetings, everyone. Uh, we're going to share in communion together. Uh, can you just check that you've got uh, some bread and a drink of some sort? Uh, we're going to use uh, black currant. We went with the color, but water's fine. And when we were in Ethiopia at communion services there, we just had water that was flavored by a little bit of honey. And so welcome to communion. And thanks, Jeff, for not just the reminder of uh, our discipleship and the need to seek God, but also that our faith uh, is not in us, but in the Lord Jesus Christ. So we're going to share communion together. Uh, it links back to the Last Supper of the Lord Jesus uh, and the Passover meal. Uh, you know that, or many of you know that it looked back to Egypt and to the deliverance of the Israelites from slavery and oppression. But on that occasion, uh, Jesus was also looking forward to what was soon to happen, uh, the experience of his death on the cross, and then through that to his resurrection. That would be where Jesus delivered us from the slaveries that we're involved in, and the oppression that we sometimes experience in life. The interesting thing about Jesus was that uh, his working for our salvation wasn't uh, the result of the exercise of power, as we think of it, or even the sort of power he used in healing people and delivering folk from demon possession and uh, raising them from the dead. It was actually a very different sort of journey altogether. It was about him submitting to his father will, the Father's will. It was about weakness. It was about uh, powerlessness. You remember his prayer in the garden, not my will, but yours be done. And from Philippians, Jesus took the nature of a servant he became like a human being and appeared in human likeness. He was humble. He walked the path of obedience all the way to death, his death on the cross. And then if I could take you a little bit further on in that journey, one of the great cries from the cross was, it is finished. Was it a shout? Was it just a, a quiet, calm, confident word? It was just one word in the original language, finished. And it's interesting, the uh, bit of grammar here, the tense was what they call a perfect tense. It meant it's finished now and it's finished forever. It's done. And that's a great encouragement to us. It was true then, and it's true for us now. And so we come to communion. We look back to the cross. We look back to Jesus and what he achieved for us there. And we are so grateful. Because we now know that the cross had to be. Because God was serious about our sinfulness about its slavery and oppression, and it had to be dealt with. But the cross is also that great expression of God's love for us. Amazing. We are so grateful. And now, because of it all, the wonder of our redemption, our forgiveness, the freedom that we're experiencing, of life, resurrection life, of the hope we have today and in our destiny. And it's interesting, and I think Jeff has reminded us of that, to access all God's gifts, to be 
immersed in his grace of all that he wants to share with us. It's not about our power. It's about us being submissive to him to actually say again and again, Jesus Christ is Lord. And so we will share in communion. Let us pray together. Uh, Heavenly Father, we are so grateful. We give thanks for the way in which you were generous and merciful toward us. You sent your son. He came with grace and truth fully expressed in him. So that we, others, many, that whoever believes in him might not perish, but might have everlasting life. And so, Father, today, again, we thank you for his uh, birth that was in humility. For every part of his life and ministry amongst people, uh, all of this so inspiring to us. But especially today, again, we thank you for his sufferings and death on the cross. And then for his glorious resurrection his ascension, his a promise that he would come again. It's so transforming. And we thank you. And as we share in communion this morning, we again offer ourselves to you as a holy and as a living sacrifice that we might serve you and share in your kingdom life. Be with us now as we share in communion. Amen. So I have some bread here. And uh, we break it as a sign of the brokenness of Christ, of him giving his life for us. Remembering he said, this is my body broken for you, given for you. Remembering that the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many people. So let's share in the bread now. Take a piece and eat of it and remember Jesus. And the cup, this cup is God's new covenant sealed in my blood, Jesus said. It's been poured out for you. And so we drink, we remember, and we give thanks. And these words from the first chapter of Colossians. May you be made strong with all the strength which comes from his glorious power. So that you may be able to endure everything with patience. And with joy, give thanks to the father who has made you fit to have your share of what God has reserved for his people in his kingdom of light he has rescued us from the power of darkness and brought us safe into the kingdom of his dear son by whom we are set free because our sins have been forgiven may the lord bless you 
And Jono, we hand over to you just to let you know the words of the first song weren't on the screen. That may have been intentional, but just letting you know. Thank you, Gary. We'll try and uh, get these up this time. Another.